What if I told you that many of the vitamins in your supplements are actually fake and definitely not what you would get naturally from food? In this video, I will cover the most common nutrients that aren't the real thing, how to spot them quickly, and what to take instead to get the highest quality vitamins possible. Let's start with one of the most common fake nutrients out there, beta carotene being sold as vitamin A. Now what you have to understand is that vitamin A comes in two forms, preform vitamin A and pro-vitamin A. Preform vitamin A is the actual real thing. It's biologically active, doesn't need to be converted to become active, and has antioxidative properties, helps with vision and immunity. When it comes to food, you will only find it in animal food sources, such as cod liver oil or high quality butter or milk. It is fat soluble and can accumulate in the fat tissue. Now, sometimes supplement brands will synthesize the vitamin A, then it will be called retinol palmitate or retinol acetate. In either case, so when it comes naturally from foods or when it's been isolated in a lab, the retinol is the actual vitamin A we're talking about. Now, next to the preform vitamin A, we also have pro vitamin A. And it comes from carotenoids that are only found in plant foods. There are many different types of carotenoids, but the most famous one is beta carotene, which you probably know from carrots. Beta carotene can be seen as a precursor to the real vitamin A, so retinol, because in the body it can be converted into retinol. This is why legally you can call your beta carotene supplement a vitamin A supplement, at least in the US because like I said before, it can be turned into retinol in the body. But this is still very misleading and why I call it a fake vitamin. Because the conversion of pro-vitamin A into preform vitamin A relies on many different factors that don't always work right in everyone. What you have to understand is that an enzyme called beta-carotene oxygenase 1, BCO1, sometimes also called BCMO1, is responsible for the proper conversion of beta carotene to retinol, which is then further converted into retinol. Unfortunately, this enzyme is heavily dependent on thyroxine, which is the main hormone that is secreted by the thyroid gland. So if you have a low thyroid function, chances are your conversion from beta carotene to retinol will not function right. But even if you don't have that problem, the BCMO1 gene can be affected by quite a few polymorphisms, so gene variations. It is estimated that around 30 to 40 percent of people with European descent have such a polymorphism that will negatively affect their conversion of beta carotene to retinol. Now, people who regularly consume animal products that are high in vitamin A, like cod liver oil, butter, or some fatty meats, won't really notice this because they're getting enough preformed vitamin A in their diet. But vegetarians or vegans who heavily rely on pro-vitamin A in the form of beta carotene, but then don't convert it properly in their body, can run into deficiency problems here. Even though apparently, even if they take a beta carotene supplement, they shouldn't have this problem. Just keep that in the back of your mind when you're buying vitamin A supplements. The next fake vitamin I want to talk about is ascorbic acid being labeled vitamin C. Now, this one is a little more of a difficult case because technically vitamin C is defined as ascorbic acid. So how can I call it a fake vitamin? What you have to understand is that vitamin C in its isolated form, so just ascorbic acid, never appears in nature in such high doses like you find in supplements. If we look at foods naturally high in vitamin C, such as acerola berries or kamu kamu, then they not only come with ascorbic acid, but also with other important cofactors, such as tyrosinase, which is a copper enzyme, bioflavonoids, and certain factors sometimes called PJ and K. Nutritionists often debate how important these cofactors really are. Some say that ascorbic acid is by far the most important one and it's fine if you take it in isolation, while others say you should never supplement ascorbic acid by itself and rely on whole food vitamin C supplements instead because high doses of ascorbic acid will deplete your cofactors. I personally believe it always depends on the circumstances. I'm not going to tell you to never take ascorbic acid, but ascorbic acid and whole food vitamin C definitely act differently in the body. 
I'm not aware of any scientific studies that looked at this, but I can tell you from personal experience and seeing it in other people that they aren't the same thing when we look at it in practice. For example, isolated vitamin C, so ascorbic acid, appears to deplete ceruloplasmin, which is a copper-dependent enzyme in the body. And this makes sense because copper enzymes are a factor that ascorbic acid is lacking that is naturally present in whole food vitamin C sources. Not in the form of ceruloplasmin, but like I said before, in the form of tyrosinase. What that means is that before you supplement, you want to understand how these different compounds, so ascorbic acid on one side and whole food vitamin C on the other, interact with your body and interact with the nutrients and enzymes in your body. Then you can decide which is better for you and buy that product. All I'm trying to show here is that the notion that ascorbic acid is the same exact thing as vitamin C is misleading. Yes, it is defined as vitamin C, but there's more to it than just the ascorbic acid molecule. The third fake vitamin I want to talk about is alpha tocopherol which will be declared as a vitamin E on supplement bottles. In natural foods, vitamin E comes in eight forms. Four tocopherols, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta, and four tocotrienols, again, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. Unfortunately, most supplement brands only include one form, so alpha tocopherol in their products. The reason for this is for cost reasons, and also because alpha tocopherol appears to be the most biologically active form. But that doesn't mean you don't need the others as well. For example, wheat germ oil, which is a food that is naturally high in vitamin E, is also full of fatty acids that oxidize quickly. What nature has come up with is that it protects these fatty acids with eight layers of tocopherols and tocotrienols, just like I said before. If you only take alpha tocopherol, you only get one of these antioxidative layers. Unfortunately, in practice, I can't tell you whether this is a huge problem or not. The only long-term vitamin E studies we have compare completely synthetic vitamin E supplements versus alpha tocopherol supplements, because all eight forms of vitamin E are still found in only a small number of supplements out there. I would still advise you to go with such a type of vitamin E supplement. They're usually more expensive. Or you can also choose to regularly eat foods that are high in vitamin E, such as wheat germ oil or red palm oil. Okay, now that we already talked about three fake vitamins you will find in many supplements out there, let's talk about the last one, which is vitamin D. And I left it for last because it's such a controversial topic. The vitamin D that is generated in your body after sun exposure and the vitamin D that you get from supplements are not the same thing. The vitamin D from sun exposure is sulfated, so it's called cholecalciferol sulfate. And the vitamin D in supplements is not sulfated, so it's just called cholecalciferol. I dedicated an entire video to this topic, and it does get complex. A lot of people have very strong opinions on vitamin D. So all I ask of you is before you go crazy in the comments, please go watch my other video. It explains everything in much more detail. In practice, what happens is that very high doses of vitamin D interact with other nutrients and can deplete them. This is much more likely to happen when you take high doses of isolated vitamin D from supplements than when you just get it through sun exposure, because your body would simply downregulate vitamin D production. The most common problems people run into with high dose vitamin D supplements are a magnesium deficiency, a potassium deficiency, and it can also knock down vitamin A in the liver. But just like with all the other vitamins that we talked about so far, this has to be decided on a case-by-case -case basis. Some people would benefit from a vitamin D supplement, while others should stay away from it. If you don't know your personal nutrient status, I recommend you focus mostly on natural vitamin D sources, such as sun exposure or cod liver oil, for example. Cod liver oil comes not just with vitamin D, but also with vitamin A. So the risk of the vitamin D knocking down the vitamin A are lower. Before I wrap up this video, let me again say that even though I wanted to discredit all the fake vitamins I talked about in this video that most people aren't even aware of, it doesn't mean you should always take one or the other. So it doesn't mean you should always take the whole food version 
or always the synthetic version. There are benefits to both, and the benefits of whole food vitamins would be that they're easier on the stomach, they usually come with the necessary cofactors, and you will encounter fewer side effects. The benefits of isolated vitamins are that higher doses are possible, they're usually cheaper, and sometimes we want to take advantage of their nutrient interactions. What you choose always comes down to your personal situation, preference, and what you want to achieve. Of course, many supplement brands would never tell you this. They will simply sell you the cheapest stuff as the real thing. So definitely look at the nutrient label to not be fooled again. I hope you like this video and I see you in the next one.